let's take a look here now at uh, at uh, Google Slides Scenario Three. In this scenario, Svetlana is uh, working with the members of PLC to design a project where students can uh, will be presenting to um, to an authentic audience of parents. And in addition, they uh, will need to collaborate on it, and the, they want them to be to use some of the uh, kind of a graphic design. Uh, elements of Google Slides to really uh, inject some creativity into what they're working on. So let's go ahead and see how they can use slides to accomplish all of these things. So the first thing, um, as far as facilitating uh, uh, collaboration, uh, that, that all starts here with the share button. So uh, the, this can be shared with with uh, collaborators that maybe they only want comment access. So we switch it to commenting permission, whereas others can The uh, edit permissions. So some people can edit, some people can just leave comments, and that's uh, kind of the nuts and bolts of the uh, the collaboration portion of this. Uh, from there, uh, if they want to make their uh, their slides more visually appealing beyond the plain blank white default theme, they click theme up here on the toolbar. And there's a variety of themes in which they can choose to make their slides uh, much more visually appealing. If they want, if what they see here is not what they really want, they can actually do a Google search for themes online that, that are free to be downloaded, and then they can they can uh, import those themes into slides and use them on their presentation. Um, to really inject a little bit more creativity to the whole thing, students can use some of the um, some of the really cool um, graphic design uh, elements of slides. Uh, so as far as uh, one example of that would be something like drop shadow. Let's take a look at what that looks like. I'm going to start by inserting some word art. I'm just going to put one word here for argument's sake here. I put the word collaboration. Let me get rid of these boxes here so we can focus just on the word art here. So um, what I can do here is be creative with it. I'll make it nice and bold. I can do a lot of different things with it. I can change the <clears throat> change the font. What I really want to do is add a is add a drop shadow to it. So what I'm going to do here first is going to change the color of this black, and then I'm going to click on when I right click on it. I'm going to come here to Format Options, and here I have uh, in my Format here Options we have Drop Shadow. So I'm going to click on that, and we're going to can change the different settings here on the drop shadow and you can see how, how it changes there on there so it, what it does it really allows me to be very creative with this I go ahead and close that out and then you can see that, that that's a much more dynamic uh, graphic there on my uh, on my slide so using drop shadow is one of a variety of um, different options you have for students to be uh, very creative uh, as they uh, they create uh, their slides to make them uh, much more visually appealing. And one last thing here with uh, Scenario 3 is, um, is a way that they can use the slides um, uh, and, and use it as a method of making digital signage. So let's say, for example, on a parent a re report card, not, not every kid's going to be there at the same time, but the teacher wants to show off um, the students' presentations, um, they want to show them off um, as, it, as it, the, the, uh, the parents walk through the classroom. And one way you can use Google Slides is where you can create a slideshow that loops constantly um, over and over. So no matter what time during the evening that, they sh that the parent shows up, the slideshow is always is ongoing and looping um, continuously. So everyone will have a chance to see it. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look how you do this. You do this by publishing to web. So if I, once I've created my, uh, my slideshow here, let me add a couple other slides here, just for argument's sake. Okay. We have a couple, we have three slides here. So what I would do, I click uh, file, I'm gonna come here down to publish to web. And now I'm gonna choose how, how quickly or how long I want to auto advance the slides. So let's say I want each slide to be on for 15 seconds before it moves on. And we're going to go ahead and restart the slideshow after the last slide. So once it gets to the end, it's automatically going to uh, restart. And we're also going to start it immediately once the, once it loads. And when I hit publish, click OK. And now it gives me a link. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this link here. And this is the link that I would I would paste and um, onto a Chromebook and have it uh, playing over and over. So now that I have this here, let's open a new tab and see what it looks like when I paste the link in. And for about, uh, you have 
to wait for, for 15 seconds uh, for it to automatically move on to the next slide. So we'll go ahead and be patient and wait for that. Again, there's no need to actually uh, advance the slide. I could, but every 15 seconds, it's gonna, it's gonna move on. There we go, it's already gone to the next one. And then when it gets to the very end, in a few more seconds, it'll go on to uh, the, the third slide. It will start over and continue on a continuous loop. There we are, we're now on the last one. So we'll wait a few more seconds for it, 15 seconds for it to, to cycle through. And then we'll see how it starts over from the beginning. And this is a good way for a presentation to be shown even when the, uh, the students who created the presentation aren't there to manually do it. So here we are, where it automatically started up here again. 